What's the latest in Microsoft Loop? Loop has begun to arrive in Outlook Desktop for Windows. Add a loop component to a new message or in a reply to a message. If you're using the expanded or classic menu in Outlook, then you're going to see loop on the message tab. It's going to be called a large icon. It's also available in the insert tab of the ribbon menu. However, if you're using this simplified menu and it's collapsed, then you'll find the loop component uh, in the ellipsis menu or three dots menu at the very end and in that new collaborate section, loop components. The loop components arrived in Outlook Web Access 2 earlier in the month, in August. And compared to the desktop experience, the loop component button is a little more prominent, especially when you compare it to the simplified menu. So it might take a little while to build the uh, awareness of loop components and start to insert them into your messages and replies. It's still best to add a subject to the loop to begin with. Uh, when you uh, add that subject and you begin to insert your loop, then uh, it's going to use the subject of the email as the file name for the loop. You'll see that there are a, a few loop components to choose from. I'm going to start off with a bullet list. And this creates the loop and it picks up the name from the subject of the email. Once you've added the loop to the, uh, the email, um, you can add a title to it. So this is the latest in loop. And begin to fill out your loop component. But you don't have to just stop there with one component. You can um, add other types of loop components within that loop. So I might just add a table. And so now I've got a bullet point list and a table. But I'm also able to add additional loop components within the email message. So this will, if I add one here, let's just start off with a task list, then this uh, creates an entirely separate file for that loop. Again, it picks up the subject from the email and you can create your additional loop component and separate file. There might be some good use cases for that for separating collaboration into different files. Now one thing to note about the loops when you do create them, um, the permissions are going to depend on what your organization has set as your sharing default. Um, to change and check those permissions, click on the link and you'll see a little pop-up of what the current permissions are. In my organization, I've set my default to share with uh, the edit link for anyone in my organization. And this is ideal for sharing and collaborating with loops. Uh, for some organizations, they've set it so that it's view only for people within the organization. To change what we want the permissions to be, click Manage Access, and you'll see quite a familiar sharing dialog box which will allow you to change the permissions. Uh, so that we might just say it's only for recipients of the message or just people with existing access. And you can change whether it is view or edit in that point there. But just keep that in mind, if, if your default for your organization is sending it with just view access for the link, then you might want to check each of your links uh, for the loop each time until Microsoft makes that change. So I'll send this loop off to a couple of people I want to collaborate with. There's Matt and Laura. And you see what happens is that the loop is sent back to me. Uh, as it is sent, my name is included in the CC field so that I can see the loop and I don't have to go hunting in my send items to find the loop and collaborate with, uh, my, with my people. Now loops can be, loops that have been created in email can also be copied and shared in Microsoft Teams. So I'll go over to a Teams conversation and paste that link to the loop in the chat and send that to Matt. 
And likewise, if there is a loop that we've created within a, a Teams chat, then we can go back over and add it to an email. In this case, I'll reply to the group and just paste in the link to the loop that I started with Matt earlier. And we'll send that off. Simple sharing is one of the strengths of Microsoft Loop. So these links that we can copy and change permissions are very powerful for collaborating in the different places that we work together. And so now you see that because Loop is supported in Outlook Desktop and Outlook Web Access, that the embed of Loop, the collaborative space or Canvas, is now visible and available to us in the email. Now the other effect of this is that if we have been mentioned within a loop, like this one here from Laura, let's open that up in a separate window, then I get the notification to say that I've been mentioned in the loop, but I now also can see the whole loop. And so I can get straight into seeing where I've been mentioned and I can start to collaborate and add my responses or content to there as well. Now I said that Loop is arriving. When is it arriving for you? Well, if your organization has uh, set you to receive updates uh, early in the current channel, then this means that it is currently rolling out to you and it should be finished by the end of September. And for everyone else, uh, then it's going to become generally available uh, starting November and should be finished by, by December. So that's the latest in Loop. Go check it out for yourself. Bye for now.